Everywhere, you can find articles claiming that NASA has discovered Earth 2.0, or a planet that could support life better than Earth. These reports often highlight a few prominent planets, particularly Kepler 22b, Kepler 186f, Proxima Centauri b, the Trappist-1 system, and some others. However, many people don't realize that these planets aren't actually ideal candidates for life. They're simply the best options among the planets we know, but that doesn't mean they are habitable. So, in this video, I'll go over each so-called habitable planet and explain why these exoplanets may not be ideal places for life. Then we'll look at some candidates with potentially better chances. Let's start with Kepler-22b, a well-known planet. Kepler-22b lies in the habitable zone of its host star, where temperatures are suitable for liquid water to exist. But that's almost the only similarity it has with Earth. Kepler-22b should have been removed from the list of potentially habitable exoplanets long ago because, in reality, we still can't accurately determine its mass. All we know is that its mass is less than nine times that of Earth, and its radius is about 2.3 times larger than Earth's. With this size, it's likely that Kepler-22b isn't a rocky planet, but more similar to Neptune, with a thick atmosphere and no solid surface. Kepler-22b might even be an entirely water-covered planet, with oceans hundreds of miles deep. However, the presence of water here doesn't mean it can support life. Oceans that are too deep might not provide a suitable environment for life. Life requires initial factors like volcanic activity, hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor, or hot springs on the surface. But in an environment like Kepler-22b, this is unlikely, as the high pressure at the ocean floor could make the seabed solid. Therefore, despite having ideal temperatures, Kepler-22b lacks other critical elements and is almost certainly not a habitable planet. This leads to an important note. Just because a planet is in the habitable zone doesn't mean it's actually habitable. The habitable zone simply means an area where temperatures are suitable for liquid water to exist on the surface. This doesn't guarantee that the planet has water, an atmosphere, or the pressure needed to support life. Truly habitable planets are extremely rare. The next planet on this list is Kepler-186f. Compared to Kepler-22b, Kepler-186f appears more promising because its mass is closer to Earth's, around 1.5 times as large. This gives Kepler-186f a much higher likelihood of having a solid surface than Kepler-22b. However, this planet's equilibrium temperature is about 120 degrees Fel or 85 degrees Celsius, even colder than Mars. This figure is just an estimate if the planet has no atmosphere. If it does have an atmosphere, the greenhouse effect could warm it up, but even then, Kepler-186f would still be very cold. Trying to create an atmosphere thick enough to retain livable temperatures might lead to an overly thick atmosphere like Venus. Thus, Kepler-186f is very likely to be a freezing world or a scorching one like Venus. You may have heard that Kepler-186f could have red-colored vegetation if the planet were habitable, which might be true. However, when discussing Kepler-186f's habitability, we overlook the other planets in the same system, like Kepler-186b, c, d, and e. These planets might be as interesting as Mars, Venus, or Mercury, but are rarely mentioned. Planets that are not habitable can still be valuable for research, and by focusing only on potentially habitable planets, we overlook many fascinating worlds in the universe. Next is Proxima b, perhaps the least likely to be habitable in this list. Considering Proxima b as a candidate for life is quite risky, as the conditions on this planet are not favorable. Proxima b orbits a red dwarf star that frequently emits strong radiation flares. These radiation bursts may have already destroyed its atmosphere and oceans if they existed. Furthermore, Proxima b may be tidally locked to its star, meaning one side always faces the star creating extreme temperature differences between its two sides. Given these harsh conditions, it's hard to imagine Proxima b being habitable. Since this planet doesn't transit in front of its star from our viewpoint, gathering atmospheric data on it is very challenging. But from what we know, it appears to be a barren world with very high radiation. 
This is a common issue for many planets orbiting red dwarfs, including those in the TRAPPIST-1 system. The TRAPPIST-1 system has seven Earth-sized planets, three of which lie in the habitable zone. However, these planets also experience intense effects from their red dwarf host star. While TRAPPIST-1 is relatively stable compared to other red dwarfs, it may have historically emitted enough radiation to strip away the atmospheres of its planets. Data from the James Webb Telescope suggests that TRAPPIST-1b might lack an atmosphere, and other planets in this system could be similar. So while interesting, the TRAPPIST-1 system is not an ideal place for life. These planets may have long lost their atmospheres due to radiation, significantly reducing their habitability potential. Planet K2-18b is an exception, as it has a mass eight times that of Earth. However, this mass makes it more like an icy or ocean planet rather than a rocky one. Observations from the James Webb Telescope suggest that K2-18b may have dimethyl sulfide, a compound associated with life, but this finding is only a preliminary indication. The oceans on K2-18b, if they exist, might also be lava oceans, making the planet's habitability very low. The planet Gliese 667cc appears more promising, with an equilibrium temperature around 39 degrees far, less cold than Kepler 186f. This planet also orbits a red dwarf and would need to maintain an optimal atmosphere to be habitable. With its large mass, Gliese 667cc might retain an atmosphere, but could risk becoming a world like Venus. While there are many potentially habitable exoplanets, we can't be sure that they truly resemble Earth. One example is Tea Garden B, but we currently have too little data to determine much about it. Among the dozens of potentially habitable exoplanets, only one stands out, TOI 700D. TOI 700D orbits a young red dwarf star, which is different from the older red dwarfs on this list. TOI 700D's star is brighter, allowing the planet to orbit at a greater distance and reducing the likelihood of tidal locking. This planet receives energy close to that of Earth, has a mass close to Earth's, and has the potential to retain an atmosphere. The bottom line is that just because a planet is in the habitable zone doesn't mean it's actually habitable. Most of these planets may not differ much from Venus, Mars, or Mercury. Habitable planets are incredibly rare. However, I believe that in the future, we will discover a truly Earth-like planet. But for now, no planet meets all the factors to be considered Earth 2.0. Thank you for watching the video. I hope the information provided offered you an interesting and helpful perspective. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss upcoming videos. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you, and see you in the next video.